Hey gang, Pete Williams here again. And what I wanted to do for you in this short video is give you an overview of how I resold the MCG last year. For those of you who have been playing along at home for a while, you would know that one of my most publicized little projects or ventures was back when I was 21 years old actually. And I uh, was able to get my hands on a lot of the old MCC crested carpet from the MCG here in Melbourne, Australia. Now, the MCG is Australia's version of Yankee Stadium, so a pretty prestigious sporting ground. And I was reading a book called The One Minute Millionaire by Robert Allen and Mark Victor Hansen, a fantastic read that I suggest everyone uh, get a copy of. But in the story, uh, or in the book, it talks about um, a guy back in the 80s, early 90s, who bought all the timber that was the Brooklyn Bridges walkway. And he made little certificates up with a uh, history of the Brooklyn Bridge and an inch by inch piece of timber. Sold them for about 10 bucks each, I think. And word around the campfire is that he made about $2 million out of it. And being 21 year old, I thought that was such an awesome idea and started to think how I could replicate that here in Melbourne, Australia. And the MCG was undergoing redevelopment. The grandstand used to be made out of timber, so I was able to sort of track down the wrecking company and get my hands on some of that timber, along with some of the MCC crested carpet, which is fundamentally carpet that was in the members' room, the Melbourne Cricket Club. And the carpet is very, very noticeable and recognisable for those who were in the in the Australian sporting world because it had the crest on there. Very ugly, but it was pretty uh, impressive and famous carpet. So I was able to get my hands on that and make a series of sports memorabilia frames up with a photo of the MCG, a piece of this carpet, and a plaque, um, and sold it off as a, a great little project and um, got a lot of media and all that sort of stuff out of it, was, which was fantastic. But since then, I still had a lot of carpet remaining, and it was just sitting in mum's garage. I've been you know, focusing on other projects like my telco company and other bits and pieces. I never really got back involved in sort of relaunching, so to speak, the MCG venture until last year. Uh, early last year, I decided to actually pull my finger out and actually, uh, yeah, relaunch the MCG project. And I relaunched it uh, following Jeff Walker's product launch formula sequence, which is a fantastic um, system for launching a product or even relaunching a product. And uh, I thought what I'd do is actually put a video together and show you exactly the steps and the processes that I went through to actually resell and relaunch the MCG. It was a great little venture. It made a good five figures in the first hour or so of sales. So it was a very, very profitable relaunch. Uh, a lot of fun too. And I thought I'd walk you through exactly what I did and, and show you the steps and the videos and the launch sequence that we put together. So the first thing we obviously had to do was get the website up and running. Now, what I wanted to do is actually run this as a launch sequence. So rather than sending traffic to a sales page where they could just go and buy the frames and leave, I wanted to actually launch it. And the, the premise of product launch formula is to actually build a list of buyers and prospects and then mail them a sequence of mailings, whether they're videos, emails, reports, whatever it might be, to sort of really entice momentum, entice uh, want in the prospect to actually really want the product and really build the launch up before you actually open the cart. And this is fundamentally the same sort of stuff that recording artists and movie studios do when they're launching a new movie, for example. You see snippets and trailers and conversations about all of it before actually opening at the box office. So I actually put together a what's referred to as a squeeze page, which I'm sure a lot of you know, which is something like you can see here on this slide. It was a a uh, web page that had one option and that was to opt into the list. So I was all talking about the MCG goes on sale on April 22nd. There was a video that I recorded outside the MCG talking about the launch and how people can actually get a piece of the MCG and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and then the opt-in box asking people to pre-register their interest to get on the pre-release notification list. And what I actually did, I actually did three versions of this opt-in page. And I used Google's website optimizer tool to actually multivariate test the opt-in page. And what that means is I did three different versions of the headline that you can see here, three different videos, and three different opt-in, um, I guess, text. So the actual bit above the opt-in box there that sort of entices people to fill it out, there were three versions of that as well. And using Google's website optimizer tool, it actually randomly selected one of the three variants for each visitor and actually put them on the screen. 
and then that worked out which combination of headline, video, and opt-in text worked the best to really increase opt-ins. And something that I found is that different combinations resulted in massive differences in opt-in rates. Something so small as a different tweaked headline converted from a uh, like a 4% up to a 34% opt-in rate, which means I got five or six times the amount of people, or even more than that actually, uh, opt into my list by just tweaking and testing different um, opt-in pages. So that's the first big takeaway is that you should really be continually testing your opt-in pages or anything you're doing in your business because if I just sat down, wrote one headline, recorded one video and run opt-in sort of field, that would have given me a X amount of opt-ins. But by split testing it, I was able to increase that to a Y type or a Z type opt-in rate, which was just a massive difference to my ROI because it reduced my cost per lead. Same amount of traffic, but more opt-ins for that, which means a lower cost per lead. So that was the first thing I did. And the way I got traffic to this site, because I didn't have any joint venture partners at all, so no affiliates were mailing to get this uh, website traffic. Unlike most product launches that have uh, a lot of joint venture partners and affiliates to promote the product, I did this all with no list at all. And what I did, I actually did some banner advertising and AdWords pay-per-click advertising. So what you can see on the screen now is a screenshot from Fox Sports, which is one of Australia's largest uh, TV networks here, like ESPN in the States, and we have ESPN here in Australia as well, of course. But Fox Sports is one of the, the larger ones as well. And I was able to get some banner advertising on the Fox Sports website. Very, very cheap uh, CPC. But I was also able to get terms which means unlike most pay-per-click mediums we have to actually pay as you go, I was able to get a 60 or 90 day term when it came to the Fox Sports stuff, which means this whole project was cash flow positive. I actually was able to open up and launch the product before I even got the invoice from Fox Sports for the advertising, which was a great little way to actually make this whole thing cash flow itself. So using that banner advertising, mixed in with a bunch of other different stuff too. I did a bit of PPC and uh, AdWords network, you know, the AdWords content network and stuff like that. But that's the primary tool I used to drive traffic to this website. And then the real fun and gains of a product launch started once I had that list. And I did a series of things and mailings and videos specifically for this link list up to the launch date. And that's what I want to run through with you now. So the first thing I actually sent everybody was a uh, video a couple of days after they opted in. And the video was simply me just saying, hey, thanks guys for opting in. I'm blown away by the amount of people who have already pre-registered. The site's been only up for three days and we've had 250 people join the opt-in list already. Now the reason I did that and said that to people is to really reinforce the social proof element is that there's lots of other people getting involved in this launch who are excited about owning a piece of the G. Because if you haven't read Influence by Robert Cialdini, it's a book that you must read as a marketer because it talks about the different influence factors that you can use in your marketing to persuade and influence people to do things. And by mentioning social proof and, and really you know, putting social proof throughout the whole launch, it was a great way to really entice people to, to take notice and, and get involved. And you know, if other people are interested, it must be interesting is the whole philosophy of social proof. Also, too, there was only 400 frames available in this launch. So by mentioning that in the first three days, there's already 250 people on this pre-release notification list, there's a huge demand. It implies demand and also implies limited additionness, if that's a word. You know, scarcity is the term that Cialdini uses in his book. So this is the first video that I did. You know, building a bit of bond with the list as well, showing people, hey, I'm down at my mum's house in her garage, cutting up the carpet. I'm cutting up your pizza, the MCG, if you listen to some of the language I use in the video. And it's all about building rapport with the list, getting them to know me, and implying that social proof and scarcity element. So this is the first video that I sent them after they opted in. cutting up all the old MCC crested carpet for your frames, which is pretty cool. Now, I do want to say a big thank you to everybody who signed up and shot me emails and left comments on the blogs and things like that. I know it's only early, but the response has been absolutely amazing. 
Uh, and having said that, uh, it's probably looking like we're going to sell out of all the carpet frames before the general public release, which is uh, pretty astonishing. Uh, so if you haven't actually registered, but you do want to own a piece of Australian sporting history, I really suggest you go and uh, join that notification list so you can cut the queue and, and get a chance to own a piece of the MCG before the general public, if it even gets that far. Uh, so for those who don't know, the website address again is mcgmemories.com.au. Uh, there's a form on there so you can uh, join that no obligation pre-registration or pre-interest notification list. Uh, and I'm off to finish up painting this carpet so you all can own a piece of the MCG. So that was the very first video. Can you see some of those influence elements that I actually used there just to, to start the ball rolling with this whole launch? What I also did at the same time as opening up the opt-in page and using pay-per-click style traffic from banners and AdWords and things like that, I also used some publicity. And I wrote a press release to actually get some exposure and sent that out to the Melbourne media talking about how the MCG is going up for sale again because obviously it's a good hook and a good story and I, I wrote some press releases and sent it out the first one I actually sent was this one here which talks about the Melbourne Cricket Ground up for sale on April 17th very very good headline because why would the MCG the Melbourne Cricket Ground Australia's Yankee Stadium be going up for sale very very unique headline and got the attention of a lot of publicists and editors and journalists and the press release goes on to talk about how I'm actually reselling the MCG and people now have a chance to own the MCG and, and all that sort of stuff. So really talking about that and really trying to get a story out of this and very, very successfully got a lot of media attention. And one of those uh, media intentions was an interview with Red Simons on ABC Radio, which is a, a very uh, high volume radio station here in Melbourne. So there's an interview that you can check out on the blog. I won't play that for you now because it's just a, a PR thing. But if you head over to ownthegcomau forward slash blog, you can actually go and check out some of the other media that I got throughout the launch as well. Something that I didn't actually plan happened next, and it was absolutely brilliant in hindsight. A little bit nerve-wracking at the time, but very, very cool in uh, at the end of the day because what happened is after this sort of whirlwind that became this launch due to the PR and media that I actually used as well as the general sort of launch tactics the Melbourne Cricket Ground itself heard about the launch clearly and they actually sent me a nasty letter and I was able to use this and refocus and reframe this MCG letter in the launch because what they sent me a letter about was using their name in the website and the marketing. So I had to actually go and rechange all my banner ads and things like that, which wasn't too much of a big deal really. But for a lot of people, they take these sort of you know nasty or um, scary sort of letters that, that came and really sort of freeze it and shut down. I worked out a way to reframe it and use it as content for the launch. I ended up speaking to the MCG quite a few times and built some great rapport with them again. Uh, and it was all fine and, and very, very above board, but I sort of turned it around a little bit and, and used this as a mail thing piece to the list. So I actually emailed the list and put on the blog as well saying, subject line, the MCG sends me a nasty letter. Very, very strong uh, subject line when you're talking about the MCG and people are obviously interested in what's going on. And I went on to talk about how the MCG sent me a nasty letter about the project. I had to make some changes, which was fine. 
and went on to talk about how the MCG means so much to Australia that in 1999, the government decided that it needed its own parliamentary act, just like our tax act, which is something I didn't realize and it was just amazing to find out that the Australian government actually put an act around the MCG specifically and made some specific laws when it comes to talking about the MCG, which was completely bizarre to me, but it was a great hook and a great angle to really reinforce the importance of the MCG to the Australian public and a chance to own a piece of the MCG is amazing, it's limited, you shouldn't miss out on all of this. And again, at the bottom of that uh, email, I reinforce that there's 400 registrants already involved. And it's only a few days later after the last email. So the demand is picking up and there's 400 people on this pre-release notification list. And given there's only 400 frames available, you want to get in early when we open up the shopping cart in a few days' time. So it's all about building up this demand and social proof. I then continued on and released another video to the list and actually jumped on the bandwagon of a story that was happening in the media. Obviously everyone knows about the whole Tiger Woods scandal that happened back in 2010. Well I jumped on that bandwagon because it was happening right at the same time as the launch and did another release to the list a few days later, another email with a subject line, Tiger Woods caught on camera. And what I actually did was talk about how Tiger Woods is uh, you know does a lot of signings for companies like Upper Deck and other memorabilia companies for sports memorabilia, and I you know played on that Tiger Woods caught on camera angle and then sent them to a YouTube video of Tiger Woods sitting in a room and signing his name on a bunch of printed photographs, and I want to sort of show that how manufactured a lot of sports memorabilia is. And this is a perfect video to show that because Tiger Woods just sits there signing autographs with no care in the world and leveraged off the, the conversation that was going already in the world about Tiger Woods. And the reason I wanted to push that angle was because the issue with most sports memorabilia is, as I said, it's manufactured. Whereas the memorabilia that I was selling, an authentic piece of the MCG, authentic piece of Australian sporting history, it was unique. It was different. It wasn't a manufactured piece. So that was the reason I did this particular mailing out to the list to really reinforce that. And then I actually grabbed a comment from the YouTube video and really reinforced it as well to show some social proof around the element of manufactured goods. You know, I think Tiger is a joke. He speaks about doing these signings for his fans to stop fakes. However, the prices Upper Deck charge are outrageous and Tiger rarely signs items outside these signings. And the comment goes on to sort of, you know, bag Tiger Woods and the majority of the sports memorabilia industry that manufacture these collectibles. And then I actually uh, went on to really reinforce and push this point home over the next few days with the launch because I really wanted to reinforce and set the context and the framing for people when they thought about sports memorabilia. I wanted to change their view and their frame. So I actually wrote another email and a blog post and sent it to this list again a few days later talking about how I came across an Adam Gilchrist signed cricket bat for over $2,000. Now, Adam Gilchrist is a famous Australian cricketer, very, very well known here in Australia. And I went on to really talk about in this particular uh, email that the bat that was um, used in the sports memorabilia wasn't even a bat he used. It was just a manufactured bat that he assigned. And I was selling it for $2,000, linked through to the memorabilia site and saying, look, hey, this is ridiculously expensive and it's not even authentic. It's been manufactured. And really wanted to hammer that home because people already have a... Uh, uh, an alignment to buying sign memorabilia. It's just how the nature of the beast goes. So what I wanted to do is change that frame and change it on two levels. One, this authentic manufactured angle that I've mentioned a couple of times already and also seeing the price point and expectations. If I can sort of say that this manufactured stuff is $2,000, when I come to actually release the price point of my MCG frames at a lower price than that, it's going to look like an absolute bargain. It's a pure framing technique that has been used in marketing for years. And Claude Hopkins talks about it in My Life in Advertising and Scientific Advertising, which are books from about the 1930s on marketing. And again, these are two books that I really encourage you checking out. Claude Hopkins, My Life in Advertising and Scientific Advertising. He talks about framing with prices in that book way back in 1930. So I go on to talk about how this piece of MMCG 
material is amazing and it's ridiculously expensive and it's all manufactured and and also preempting what's coming up I'm going to do a few more um, emails coming up I'm going to do an FAQ video for you guys because I've been getting lots of feedback again using language to in show social proof that other people are interested and there's been some comments I even grabbed some replies out of previous emails and put them in this particular email blast to the opt-in list to again show social proof and show the conversation that's happening around the MCG launch. You know, Elizabeth sent me this wonderful email. Thank you for the update. I had the pleasure of hearing your uh, thoughts with Ray Simons and it's fantastic. I wanted to be a part of it and good on you, I say. Just reinforcing the whole angle that I really took in the media that I'm a small town boy done good. I just stumbled across this MCG memorabilia and want everyone in Australia to own a piece of it. It shouldn't go to the records. It shouldn't be forgotten about. This is Australian sporting history. So the angle that I took in the media was small town boy made good and really sort of played to that and I really tried to bond with the list that, hey, I'm trying to do something good here. I'm trying to actually share this piece of history with you. And I really do believe that because it's you know, I'm a huge sports fan, and the MCG carpet was literally sitting in a warehouse getting damp when I came across it back when I was 21 years old. And I was in shock and thought, this really should be actually uh, shared with the Australian public, and really took that angle and really reinforced it and pushed it in the marketing. You know, again, another email that came through was, you know, they might look it on the wall, but they are totally unauthentic. If they're a Premier Sports team with squiggles for signatures, who knows if they are or actually the players signing it? In fact, my nephew is a member of the XXX Sheffield Shield team, which is a cricket team here in Australia. And he has told me that if they do a signing of bats, etc., and a player is absent or unavailable, someone else signs it for him. So I want to really reinforce here that a lot of sign memorabilia can be faked or is not authentic itself anyway, let alone the, the collectible piece being manufactured. The actual autograph might not be the actual autograph of the sports star you think you're buying whereas the MCG crested carpet was completely authentic. So that's some of the language I used in that email to really reinforce that to the list. I then again wanted to hammer this point home even harder a few days later and released another video to the list saying, hey guys, everything's coming along really, really well. We're about to open up the card in a few days' time. But given the response I got to the last email about the Gilchrist bat, I thought I'd record a video of me going around other sports memorabilia websites to actually show you what is out there in the marketplace and how, how much it blows my mind. Because I wanted to really also push the us versus them uh, type of marketing. That it's me, the small guy, against the sports memorabilia industry. Because something I mentioned in that original launch video was that over the last couple of years since the original launch I did of the MCG carpet frames when I was 21 years old, I did actually try and team up with a number of memorabilia companies here in Australia to take the frames to market. But the issue I continually came up as I up against as I spoke to these memorabilia companies was that the margins they wanted were huge because they're typically used to printing a poster for about $3, having a player sign it and sell it for two grand. Like the margins are huge in the sports memorabilia market because they're manufactured pieces of memorabilia. And because with the carpet, you know, I didn't want to have them overpriced. I refused to sell them uh, at ridiculous prices. And I wanted to actually you know, share in the action a little bit when we actually took it to market with these sports memorabilia companies. We just couldn't make the numbers work. They were very much about profit and high prices, whereas I was about trying to make some money but get to as many people as possible in a cost-effective manner. So we just couldn't put this piece together. So that's something that I really pushed in the opt-in video as well, that, hey, I'm a small town boy made good. The sports memorabilia industry is bad. This is why opt-in and you can own a piece of the MCG. So I really, in this particular video, wanted to push that again. So I actually did a recording going through other memorabilia sites, showing people what is out there in the marketplace, showing them that you know when what they call a limited piece is 5,000 run or 2,000 pieces. That's not that limited, whereas I'm saying there's only 400 pieces of this MCG carpet, really reinforcing the scarcity angle. Talking about the small town boy made good. Also, trying to really pre-frame them in the price point, showing them that a manufactured poster that has 2,000 in the series is selling for 1,500 bucks. My frames, when I released the price, which they haven't found out yet, which were going to be around about $600, $700, was ridiculously cheap. So it made them think, wow, this is so much cheaper, I have to buy it. It's like 
selling money at a discount. And Dan Kennedy talks about this quite a bit. Is you want to sell money at a discount. So people would feel like they're actually going to lose 1200 bucks if they don't buy my piece because in the future, when they want to buy memorabilia, they're going to have to buy something that's manufactured for $2,000. So it almost pre-frames them that, hey, I've got to take this up, otherwise I'm going to lose money. And that's, again, just a, a psychological thing that uh, happens in marketing. Morning, gang. Pete here. And uh, I just thought I'd do another quick video for you guys. The response I got to the last email I sent out about the $2,000 replica uh, Adam Gilchrist cricket bat was amazing. So I uh, appreciate all the feedback in the comments, and I, uh, I completely agree with most of them. Uh, so having said that, I thought I'd do another video just showing you some of the other price points of different memorabilia that I found online. Um, and some of the prices astronomical, like you know, $2,000 for this Adam Kilchrist cricket bat. Um, you know, it's 381 of them, so it's relatively limited. There's, a, there's about the same sort of number of MCC carpet frames available on, uh, at the end of the week here. But $2,000, I just think that's a, a huge price point that's not actually uh, authentic. Yes, obviously, the uh, autograph has been um, you know, personally signed by Adam Gilchrist, and that's all legitimate and all that sort of stuff. But the actual, you know, the poster behind it and the cricket bat itself has just been manufactured. It's not the bat he actually used. And it just continually blows my mind that, that the price points they sell this stuff at for. And I, I guess that's the main reason that I wasn't able to put a deal together with these various memorabilia companies, you know, the ones online that we're looking at now and the ones that do the, the radio advertising or TV advertising during the summer and the cricket and the uh, memorabilia stores that you find in your local shopping uh, centres and stuff like that. Is they wanted to sell the, the frames for these sort of prices and it just, uh, it just blew my mind and I, I refused to do it because I want to try and keep this price as low as possible so everyone has a chance to own a piece of the MCG. So the price point should be finalised today with the frame. It's just working at the last little bit, but uh, I can guarantee that the price will be uh, well below half of this two thousand dollars. So you're going to be getting something, you know, a piece of authentic limited edition, uh, and it's not manufactured limited edition. It's actually, that's all the carpet there is available uh, for for well under a thousand dollars. So it, it's going to be a a lot cheaper than the typical uh, memorabilia pieces you find and have probably purchased in the past. So to give you an idea of some of the other stuff I found, one of them was just this uh, Don Bradman uh, piece of memorabilia here that's been uh, put together, and there's two and a half thousand of them in the limited edition series, as you can see here. Uh, they've been personally signed by the Don, which is fantastic. I've actually got, uh, not this particular piece, but another uh, memorabilia piece signed by the Don, which I do love, uh, but it's a one-off. It's not something that's actually uh, been uh, put together in, as a limited edition series of two and a half thousand, and particularly with a price point of $1,500, it just... It blows my, my mind the um, the amount of money that's been manufactured um, out of this sort of sports memorabilia. In that, if this one piece has two and a half thousand in its series, that have to be um, when you add up all the different series that have been put together around Don Bradman, I'd say at least fifty thousand pieces that have been created and had the Don sign, uh, which is fine. But you know, fifty thousand pieces of uh, manufactured memorabilia to me that's just uh, not the sort of stuff that I want want hanging in my home or my bar or my office and stuff like that. And you know, another piece I found here was uh, another um, personally signed series by the Don. And again, uh, this is a little bit more limited to uh, only 500 pieces, which is which is great. So it's a little bit more authentic, uh, which again is reason they're probably charging five grand, uh, five thousand dollars for this. And if you actually look at it when you open it up. Um, to me, this looks like it's just something someone's put together in uh, in Microsoft PowerPoint or something, and that's just my own personal opinion. In that, uh, you know, there's just a bunch of uh, images and photos um, put on top of this uh, this poster that's been printed off. And when you look at it, you know, that that poster in the frame, when putting that together, might cost you know, uh, and obviously possibly paid Don some money to sign this, or even um, uh, donate some money to the uh, the Donald Bradman Museum, whatever it might be. You know, 500 bucks would probably be the, the raw cost I had in producing this at the most, and it's selling for $5,000. I uh, again just just can't personally see the value in that when you can buy something that's all authentic and real, people are actually use for a lot, lot less. Uh, another piece that I found here was a uh, a replica baggy green hat uh, worn by Steve War. So it's not the actual hat he wore; it's something that's just been uh, been put together, and, and he has signed it again. It uh, doesn't say how many pieces in the in a series here, so it, it potentially may actually be unlimited. They'll just make as many as they can sell. I don't know. They haven't actually uh, put the, the details on here as well. And if you look at the poster um, or the piece there, there's no um, numbering on here. So it doesn't actually say that you know limited to or this piece is one of 500 or, or whatever it might be. So uh, I'm not sure about the, uh, the limited edition-ness, if that's a word, of this particular piece. But it's $1,300. Again, uh, amazing. Uh, this piece here, there's 145 of them, so obviously it is quite limited, which is great. Uh, again, signed by Shane Warne. 
$2,000. And if you look at this, it's just a, a poster that's been printed, which then has, uh, I believe, their actual cricket stump sitting on top of it. But again, uh, reading the description here, it doesn't say that they're the cricket stumps actually that were actually ever used. It's just uh, replica cricket stumps of uh, of get from games that he actually obviously bowled well in, or whatever it might be. So uh, that's a little bit more limited, but it's still two thousand dollars. Another piece here, two thousand dollars again for uh, some personally signed uh, cricket uh, or test jumpers. Now, looking at that, obviously it's uh, you know limited, which is great, but uh, I doubt they've actually gone and got 600 shirts that he's actually worn because he's only ever played 600 games. So I, uh, I doubt that that obviously uh, are authentic shirts he actually wore during the games again. And, and again, this is the same sort of scenario here with his $1,300 Ricky Ponting uh, jersey. Uh, and again, on this particular piece, there's no limited edition series number or anything like this, so potentially they may just be manufacturing as many as they can sell. Uh, so look, I just, uh, again, find this quite strange um, that... that uh, like you know, I have I've spent my money and bought a lot of this sort of stuff over the years, and I, I do cherish it, but uh, not as much as the uh, the piece of MCC carpet I've got hanging in my wall now since I uh, I stumbled across the carpet in that in that warehouse a few a few years ago. So um, look again in a couple of days' time, I'll have all the details um, of how you can actually grab a piece of the MCC crested carpet, the authentic uh, Melbourne Crew Ground history here. Uh, it'll be um, check your emails because there'll be an email coming out uh, in the next sort of 24 hours or so with all the price points, um, where to order it, how to order it, uh, shipping details. Uh, we're probably going to do some payment plan stuff as well, even though it's going to be uh, significantly cheaper than all those um, pieces of memorabilia there, like well below $1,000. Uh, I still want to make it easy for you guys to actually uh, grab a piece of the G and have it hanging in your home or, or office, wherever it might be, or even giving it as a gift to somebody. So there's some payment plans if you want to um, spread that out over, over a little bit of time. And we're just sort of getting all that stuff organised from my end to make it nice and smooth for you all. Uh, so again, please, uh, any questions, any comments, uh, make sure you do email me back or, or put some um, comments wherever you might be because this way I can actually um, make sure I cover all your, all your questions and then make it nice and easy for you guys. So again, thank you very, very much for supporting the uh, the Save the G cause, which I guess we're trying to put together here. Uh, and make sure you keep an email or an eye out for the email the next day or so and I'll give you all the information of how you can own a piece of the MCG. The next video I did, which was the following day, was a really cool car cast video, an over the shoulder style video. And it's a video I put together of me actually taking the carpet to the, um, to the framers to be made. Uh, the email I actually sent out with the subject line was, your piece of the G is ready. Because I really wanted them to feel and open the email thinking that the shop, shopping cart was open. So I was about getting them to watch this video and talk about how their frame is now being made and it's ready for sale, which will be available in a couple of days time. So the video I have here is of me in the car driving to the framers and then actually showing them how the carpet is being made. I want to actually walk them through the process of how their piece of the MCG is going to be put together. So they feel like that piece is already theirs. They already own it and this is exactly how it's being put together for them so they can get a feel of connection with their piece. And I want to show them how much effort and time we went into making this piece of memorabilia to show them that we're not just slapping it together, that it is really important that the piece is of high quality. So I showed them how the frame is being made, so they actually got a feel for exactly what was going on, so again, they can own their own piece of the G and know how it works. It's a really cool video, I've got some amazing feedback from it as well. Hey gang, Pete here. Now, I'm just actually on my way home from Creative Framing, who are the team who are actually putting together your piece of the MCG into the magnificent frames that you'll be able to grow a piece of in a couple of days time. Uh, I was just actually there dropping off some of the carpet because we're trying to get ahead of the rush a little bit for all the uh, pre-registration we've had. It's, it's been amazing so it's uh, a very very high chance we'll actually sell out pr prior to the general public release which is uh, really blowing my mind but uh, thank you everyone who's uh, you know put their name to sort of cut in line and, and get ahead of the curve. But uh, while I was there dropping off the carpet I actually um, was able to see them do some of the framing and it actually really blew my mind how much attention to detail these guys actually put into putting the frames together for you all. So what I did, I actually made Mark, one of the senior framers there, actually stop what he was doing, pull one of the frames he just put together apart so I could run out to my car, grab my little flip minnow video camera and actually shoot what you're about to see. 
So, uh, unfortunately, Mark did the old Colgate commercial dentist thing and didn't want to show his face on camera. So, as he was uh, doing what he was doing, putting the, the last part of the frame together, he actually explained to me the steps he was going through and all that sort of stuff. So, I'm going to do my best effort to actually commentate uh, the steps they go to to actually make sure the frames are in the best possible condition uh, and are perfect for all you guys at home. So, um, let's jump inside the computer and I'll show you the video. So, here we are at the framers as Mark there, a lovely hand model, uh, puts together your piece of MCG history. Now, what he's doing there is pretty obvious. Just uh, cleaning the glass frame is going to be the front of your particular piece of the G. And that's about getting off all the, the fingerprint marks, any sort of dust, or uh, and just ensuring there's no scratches on that particular piece of uh, glass as well. Now, Mark did mention that to make sure this is actually absolutely perfect, they go through this process up to four or five times even per frame, just to make sure that the uh, exact piece of glass itself has no scratches or anything like that, so your piece of the G uh, is the best it can be. And <laughs> here's a, a perfect example of that as Mark goes uh, back on this particular piece here just to uh, take out a little bit of the uh, remnants of any sort of finger mark or, or, or dirt mark or anything like that. One of the things you'll actually uh, you'll notice here is that the actual uh, matting, which is the, the main part of the actual frame that you see there, is uh, a double matted. So it's actually got the uh, the blue with also the, the red, uh, I guess, border around that, which uh, just brings out the redness of the actual authentic uh, MCC crested carpet there, which is uh, a nice touch, I feel. Obviously this is just uh, ensuring that we get a, uh, a good seal between the actual frame, the glass and the matting, which is uh, the gun that Mark's using here to ensure that your piece of the G, whether it's hanging in your home, your bar, uh, or in your office maybe, or if it's going to go to a friend's bar or friend's home, wherever it might be, or family member as a present, that uh, your MCG piece is actually uh, very secure and safe hanging on the wall. step of putting it all together and that is putting the glass, the matting, the photo, the plaque, obviously the piece of the carpet there along with the uh, frame all together for that final piece. I actually feel like I'm a bit of a movie star here recording the backing track that might go to one of the uh, the bonuses of a DVD or something like that. It's a bit of fun. Uh, one of the other things we want to do to ensure that your piece of history uh, is absolutely perfect is actually measured here just to make sure that there's no gaps or there's no spacing differences or, or bend in the glass or or the matting or the frame or anything like that so that's what Mark just did there with that little ruler. Uh, as I mentioned in the introductory video uh, this particular frame here that Mark's putting together was actually already, already made and I've actually had him take it apart so I can record this video which is while you see some of those uh, torn stickers on the back of this particular piece here. Now that sticker that Mark just ripped off is actually the I guess seal of authenticity from the picture frame is Guild of Victoria, which uh, Creative Frame is a member of. And that actually basically sets the standards for members of that particular guild of their framing to ensure that uh, any of their clients, not just people who are going to buy a piece of the G, get the best quality frame possible. They've got a, a series of criteria, uh, check, checks and, and benchmarks and things like that, as well as categorization for the frames. And this particular piece uh, has been built to Category 2 standard, which is one of the highest standards they actually have so you can know that your piece of the MCG has been uh, you know very diligently with high attention to detail being put together for you.
guys are really enjoying this. Not all the time you get to see sort of you know how things you're, you're investing in and buying uh, actually made. This is a, uh, a pretty cool video that I, uh, I really enjoy making for you. Mark's put the, the tape to seal off the piece there for you. The, uh, the basically last step is to actually uh, go ahead and put the final touches on the back of the frame, which will be the hooks and the, um, you know, the stickers there, which is obviously the, uh, the seal of authenticity from the uh, Framers Guild and uh, all that sort of stuff just to uh, secure your piece of history. <laughs> obvious is just marking out exactly where the uh, hooks will go on the back of the frame so your particular piece can hang nice and straight and level uh, in your home or, or in your, uh, your friend or family member's home if you're buying this as a gift for somebody. That is it, folks. Here is your very own piece of Melbourne Cricket Ground. And then the second last video I did was an FAQ video. This was the pre-launch video or the pre-release video where I actually put together a keynote or PowerPoint presentation walking through all the questions and all the main points people would want to know so they're prepared when the shopping cart opened the following day. So I put this together, just a keynote video, grab my microphone and ScreenFlow on the Mac. If you're a PC user, you could have used Camtasia and just recorded the screen as I played through that keynote presentation. And I answered all the questions like, you know, how to actually order the piece of the MCG and explain to them that the shopping cart is opening tomorrow. Make sure you get there at nine o'clock. We've got over X hundred people on the list right now. There's only 400 frames. So clearly not everyone is going to own their own piece of the MCG. So if you're interested, make sure you buy your computer at 9am. Really build up that demand and that, uh, well, I guess I'll just use the word demand, it's for people to actually, you know, make sure they get ready to actually buy this because they're going to miss out if they don't take action straight away. I talked about what the cost is going to be. I've pre-framed them over the last three or four videos about unauthentic manufactured collectibles, about high prices, about how this frame is going to be unique, how much quality we're going to to make this frame. And when they, when they see the price point, they're going to be blown away because in their mind, they've been set a, uh, a benchmark of what Sports Marine Blue should be selling for. And this piece, with how authentic it is and how high quality it is, is only this price. It makes a huge difference. It's that selling money at a discount that I spoke about earlier. Spoke about how it's going to be delivered, how they're going to receive it, all their main questions uh, and things being answered. So that was the very last video I sent out prior to opening the shopping cart.
Hey guys, Pete here, and I am very excited to put together this final video for you before we launch the uh, carpet frames tomorrow, uh, Thursday the 22nd of April. I almost lost the date there. Uh, this quick video here is just to run through all the uh, frequently asked questions that I've been getting from you all via email and bits and pieces, and just give you all the information, including price, delivery, timing, and all that fun stuff, so you do have a chance to grab your own piece of the MCG history here. So. Uh, right off the bat, I might as well answer the uh, most asked question, and is when can we actually order a piece of the G? Well, the doors will open, so to speak, on Thursday the 22nd at 9.30am, which is tomorrow morning. Uh, the website will be ownthegcomau forward slash presale.html. Now, I will shoot you guys a, uh, a link uh, or an email last in the mornings before it goes live, so we have a link that you can click on it and go to that page so you can actually order your own piece of the G. But 9.30 on Thursday is when you can actually grab a piece. Uh, next, it was a uh, frequently asked question was delivery, about how are the frames going to be delivered and what are the costs? Well, the frames are going to be delivered by a courier and Australia Post. So depending on where you're located, uh, it'll be one of the two options. Now, the price or the investment here for you actually includes shipping, so I've covered it all in one just round price to make it nice and easy for everybody. And when it comes to, to the shipping side of stuff, I actually just got off the phone with uh, Mark from the framers this morning, and we decided to go with an acrylic uh, front as opposed to glass, so it's actually going to uh, get a much cleaner look as opposed to uh, glass which has got that green tinge to it. The acrylic is actually pure like water clear, so that way you actually will get a much better presentation of the frame, but also for shipping it's going to be a little bit safer for you guys as well. Uh, next was frame dimensions, which a lot of people ask, is what is the size of the actual pieces? Well, your piece of the G is 490mm by 730mm. So that's sort of the, the dimensions of the piece there for you guys, so you know exactly where you can frame it, or it's going to be framed for you, where exactly you can hang it uh, in your home or in your bar downstairs or your office or wherever it might be. Uh, multiple orders. A lot of people have asked, uh, can they actually order multiple frames on the day? One for their dad, one for their mum, one for themselves, a brother, whatever it might be, or they all have to buy one each. Well, no, you can absolutely buy more than one. Um, throughout the, uh, the order process, you have the option of uh, checking the, uh, the quantity you want there, so if you want to grab more than one, go right ahead. Having said that though, there is only going to be 400 available in total. I've only got enough carpet, as I mentioned before, to do 400 frames. So it is a very limited edition piece of history here. So uh, if you are wanting one, make sure you are there and ready to go at 9.30 on Thursday so you don't miss out on a piece of the G. Now something else that I wanted to surprise you guys with, which I've been working on as well, which I didn't mention, is when I actually originally grabbed all the old MCC crested carpet from the wrecking company that was doing the demolition of the G, I actually was able to grab a lot of the old authentic MCG timber. Now, this is the timber that was part of the seating of the Ponsford stand. And I've done a couple of things with this timber that I want to actually give you guys as bonuses as well, a bit of a, a thank you for going on this journey with me as well. So the first uh, 50 people who actually go and purchase a piece of the MCC crested carpet frames uh, tomorrow at 9.30, we'll actually get a bonus of a certificate, a limited edition A5 certificate outlining the history of the G, including an authentic piece of the MCG timber from the Ponsford stand. So they have that little certificate there as you see. Uh, it'll be exactly as you see it there with the, um, the certificate and a piece of the G there so you actually can go and down and get a frame. It's an A5 frame, so it should be pretty easy to get. Um, frame it up exactly how you want and you are good to go there. Now, these have sold uh, briefly for around $70 each. I'm going to give you guys that as a free thank you bonus. And another bonus for those of you who are in the first 25 to buy a piece of the G will actually get an MCC, or sorry, MCG timber pen. And this has been handcrafted uh, and it's a quality writing instrument made from the timber of the G as well. Now these have sold for up to $170. Uh, the Crown Casino here in Melbourne actually bought a few off me a while ago to give to their uh, high rollers as a, uh, as a thank you gift. So I've uh, got these, they're, um, the pens themselves is what you get uh, and yeah, it's another bonus for the first 25 people who are able to actually buy a piece of the G. Now, uh, the big question is, what's the investment going to be? Now, you've all probably seen the videos and stuff of me finding and, and doing some research and um, having my mind blown away by the ridiculous prices that most sort of memorabilia companies charge for, for manufactured history. So, uh, as I mentioned, it's not going to be anywhere near that sort of, you know, two, three, four thousand dollar mark. So, what you're going to be getting uh, as a package, just to make sure we're all on the same page, is uh, the first 50 people get a certificate. 
the first 25 will not only get a certificate, but they will also get a timber pen as well. Uh, obviously, you get the MCC crested carpet framed up with a photo and the plaque and all that sort of stuff. And I've got their priceless because really I don't know how to judge that. Because given if you know a Gilchrist manufactured bat that's been signed sells for fifteen hundred dollars, what does a real authentic piece of Australian sporting history go for? I have no idea. Uh, obviously, you get Australia-wide shipping and handling and all that sort of stuff, plus GST. So it's all nice and inclusive. And I've been able to uh, put the deal together with the framers to get this whole thing for you for only $795. Uh, so I've kept it as low as possible. So it's a uh, significantly cheaper than any other piece of memorabilia that's of uh, equal sort of uh, historic relevance or anything like that. So when it comes to that, I've actually put together two payment options for you as well. So I want to uh, make it as easy for you guys to actually uh, have a piece of the G hanging in your home. And that's either a once-off payment for $795 or three monthly payments of just $275. So you can choose that option and we'll just uh, charge your card uh, once for the next three months and then you'll have a piece of the G hanging in your home or your office or as a perfect gift for Christmas or for a family member's birthday or anything like that. Uh, now look, if there's any other questions I haven't answered but you have any, uh, you want to ask me something, please make sure you shoot me an email to ownthegg at gmail.com. I'll make sure I answer them all before tomorrow morning. Uh, and I have to say again, best of luck. There's obviously uh, a number of people who are actually uh, on this list now. And the last um, couple of days, or last day or so, the actual YouTube videos have gone ridiculously viral. and have got a, a bunch of impressions. I think um, some of the videos have actually had up to 2,000 views now, which has been amazing. So obviously, the uh, interest in this has just blown up in the last couple of days. So I um, hope everyone who wants a piece can actually get in and get a piece. Unfortunately, it's not going to be the case given that We've only got 400 frames available and a lot more people who have opted in to, uh, to register their interest. So I'm sure this will uh, go very, very well. And for those of you who get a piece, uh, congratulations. And thank you to everybody who's been on the journey. Make sure you keep an eye out for your emails tomorrow morning. I will uh, shoot one final email to you before we go live with the uh, launch with a link of where to get it and how to order it. And there might even be a short video walking you through the, um, the purchase process to make sure it's all clear for everybody so no one gets confused and misses out because of technology issues or anything like that. Uh, thank you very much. Again, own the G at gmail.com if you have any questions at all. So that was the last video I sent them before opening the car. And I also used a bit of social proof you would have seen there at the start of the video where I put in more testimonials from other people on the list to really reinforce that social proof element. And then I sent out the very uh, last email prior to the cart opening and that was on the morning of the cart saying, hey guys, secure your piece of the G now, here's the website, here's the way to order, give me a call if you need to, take action right away. And that was the easiest email to send out of the entire sequence. It was just, hey guys, you're ready to go. It was fundamentally opening the doors after everyone was lined up banging to get in. And I wanted to really reinforce that with all the testimonials and the social proof elements that everyone was banging on the doors and they actually were. It really blew me away how successful this launch was. And then what I actually did as well, at the same time, did some more PR. So I did try to really jump on the bandwagon of PR again the day before the actual shopping cart was opened. And I wrote a press release with a headline saying, Melbourne Cricket Grand Sale goes viral on YouTube. Because of the demand and the list that I built up throughout this launch sequence, the videos that I was releasing, I was releasing on YouTube and, sent, and embedding them into the blog. And then when I did a, a launch or a uh, blast to the list, I'd send them to the blog page with the YouTube video. So when they watched it, the video play or the counter went up on YouTube. So I could actually leverage the actual YouTube exposure I was getting in the media. And this is something that a lot of people don't do in their launches. They don't sort of like really use the social proof element to leverage that from an exposure perspective. They use the social proof to actually market to their list. But they don't use the social proof to market to new prospects, which is what I did with this press release. You know, everyone in the media loves a good viral story. They're always trying to sort of jump on the bandwagon of something that's happening in the real world media. So I gave them this on a silver platter. The Melbourne Cricket Grand Sale goes viral on YouTube was the headline. Very, very compelling. Again, reinforces the MCG sale. What the hell is going on there? It goes viral on YouTube, shows that there's people interested. It's a press release that just screams, hey, there's already social proof in this story. And I went on to talk about how the MCG was going on sale 
and how the, the uh, videos on YouTube have become a sensation. There's thousands of views happening in the last 24 hours alone. Uh, talking about how this, you know, the site's going up and running and people can go and actually buy right now and, hey, check out the YouTube video. And the press release was just walking them through this whole story. And again, I got a lot of exposure off the back of that. I got some more radio interviews and a half page or two third page article with a big photo in the Melbourne M MX magazine. And the Melbourne MX magazine is the free newspaper that's given out to travelers and commuters on all the trains throughout metropolitan Melbourne. It's read by thousands and thousands of people. I think it's like a 300,000 or, or an 800,000 readership, something ridiculously large, just stupid numbers. And it's a free magazine. So what I was able to do is get more exposure for this launch to the general public, which drove a lot of traffic to the site and obviously a lot of sales as well. But then I actually used that exposure to reinforce the urgency to my own list. So I actually took some photos and, and, and things while I was actually having this photo shoot done for the newspaper article and sent it to the list as well with an email blast. Actually, I might not have added the photos. I think I just sent an email to the list saying, hey guys, just letting you know that this morning I did a photo shoot for the MX for today because they print it around midday in, in Melbourne and it goes out for the commuters on their way home. So I was like, hey guys, the you know, shopping cart opened three hours ago. I just did a article or in photo shoot for MX Magazine, and they're gonna run it into night's edition, which means 300,000 people are gonna see the opportunity to own a piece of the MCG. So if you're interested in owning, act now. There's a few left, but soon they're gonna have 300,000 other people having the opportunity, understanding and finding out about how they can own a piece of the MCG. So make sure you act now. So it's a great reinforcement tool to get the urgency and another excuse to mail the list. And I think that's a secret that Jeff talks about in the product launch formula. You really want to find any excuse to mail your list during the launch sequence. And the product launch formula that Jeff teaches is a great system. And I literally just use that by the book to relaunch the MCG last year. And when the shopping cart opened, as I said at the start of the video, we made a significant five figures in the first hour of sales, let alone what happened over the next few days. It was an amazing relaunch had a heck of a lot of fun with the list, built some great rapport, and made some significant money. So that's it, guys. I just wanted, that's it. That is exactly how I relaunched and resold the MCG. I thought I'd break it down for you so you guys can actually see exactly the steps, the techniques, and the videos, and the language that I used to relaunch it. So I really encourage you to sort of, again, grab your pen and paper, re-watch this video, listen to the videos, and watch the videos that I actually released throughout the launch sequence. Reread and listen to the language that I used and the underlying influence techniques that I used throughout the whole product launch sequence. Because no matter what business you're in, whether you're selling sports memorabilia, you're launching an ebook or an online product, maybe you've got a membership site you want to launch, or even you're in a, uh, a retail space and there's a new product coming out from a manufacturer, you can use that uh, lead up time to launch it to your list to get additional sales out of your current client base. So that's it guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. And again, as always, please feel free to shoot me an email with any questions you have, any feedback, any thoughts, anything you have to support at preneurgroup.com. That's support at preneurgroup.com. And if you're interested in product launches and things like that, let me know and shoot me an email because what I'll make sure I do is I'll get flow from my team to actually put together a zip file of all the videos, or at least links to all the videos, all the press releases, all the emails in text files, so you guys can actually take it and use it as a swipe file. I can give you that completely for free. So if you want that, email support at preneurgroup.com, and I'll get Flo to send you a zip file, or a link to a download page where you can get the zip file, with all the information and techniques, and yes, the, basically the content I used to relaunch the MCG. It's available on the blog over at ownthegee.com, but realistically, it's going to be much better in a structured zip file that I'll have Florence put together. So support at preneurgroup.com, completely free, no obligation, and you can take the launch formula that I used and you can apply it to your own business. See you guys again soon.